from rust on an aircraft carrier to calcium deposits on the grout in your bathroom, this scratch brush is tough enough to take on the most stubborn stains. The metal bristles are so strong, they can even remove paint. And the toothbrush-like bend in the handle makes it easier to clean hard-to-reach places. But how do they make such a little brush strong enough to stand up to just about anything? Making a scratch brush starts with gluing together several thin sheets of wood veneer to make one thicker board to cut into the brush handles. They use a mix of hardwoods, like birch, beech, and maple, all dense heavy woods with a clear grain that are used to make other strong wooden products like furniture and musical instruments. To laminate or glue the wood together, sheets of veneer are fed by hand into a gluing machine that uses rubber rollers to coat the veneer in a water-based wood glue. A second worker catches the veneers and layers them in stacks of seven to make a composite board. The grain pattern in the wood is alternated, lengthwise and then widthwise with each veneer in the stack, so the grains crisscross within the finished board. Each veneer is just 52 thousandths of an inch thick, or about as thick as 15 pieces of typing paper. But when stacked together with crisscrossing grain, the composite board becomes stronger than a solid block of wood. Once the veneers are stacked, they're pressed together inside a heated glue press. The press uses 200 degree heat and 70 pounds of pressure to fuse the layers into a composite board. At the same time, the press puts the toothbrush-like curve into the wood that helps the handles reach into tight places. Once the glue is set, the boards are loaded into a custom wood saw with 23 rapidly spinning carbide blades inside that cut 21 brush handles out of each board in just a second flat. To smooth out the rough edges left by the saw, the handles are carried away on a conveyor belt and dumped into a tumbler that rubs away splinters and burrs on the handles while they tumble. After 15 minutes, the handles tumble out, ready for their bristles. To prepare the handles, a machine called a handle feeder cues them up one at a time. In a ladder-like conveyor that carries them to the top of the machine. Along the way, a metal sensor takes measurements to find the toothbrush-like curve in the handle and tell the machine which way the handle is facing. If the curve isn't facing to the right, a mechanical arm at the top of the ladder flips it so all the handles are facing the same direction. Once the handles are queued up, they're whisked away to get their bristles. A mechanical arm grabs four handles at a time and places them on a carousel that rotates them through the filling machine to add the bristles. The first turn of the carousel positions the handles in front of a drill that uses a tiny carbide bit to drill 20 holes into each brush head to hold the bristles. The holes are less than 8 one hundredths of an inch thick but each one can hold 36 brass wires that are folded in half to make two bristles for a total of 72 bristles per hole and 1,520 bristles in each brush. To get all those bristles into the holes, the carousel turns again and stops in front of an automatic filler that stuffs the folded ends of the wires into the holes. The wires are just one one-thousandth of an inch thick or about twice the thickness of a human hair. Yet the brass makes them strong enough to scrub and scrape while also being soft enough that they won't leave scratches in most surfaces. The machine works so fast it's able to fill four brushes or 80 holes in just 11 and a half seconds. Once the bristles are in, the brushes move to another machine called the guillotine that chops off the ends of the bristles so they're all even in length. Then this little brush is ready to scrub just about anything clean, whether it's in your home or out at sea. 